cookies and stuff and uh, everyone's kind of tired. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start up. Uh, I did a, a game tour summit uh, in the EU uh, a year ago and we did yoga. But that wasn't really enough, so uh, I figured what we should do at the start of this talk, we're just going to get the juices flowing, is to do a little bit of exercise. So please get up from your chair right now, make sure that there's ample space around you. I know, it's yeah, horrible. But like, let's just do it real quick. It's going to be like a minute. Uh, it's not going to be much. Uh, I am not in good enough shape to actually you know, be doing this for a long time. But, so let's try to, you know, uh, easen up a little bit the muscles. Yeah, are we feeling good? Okay, so, first thing before we get started, that way, okay, cool. So, let's try and make sure that there is enough space left and right from us, okay? Good, are you ready? Uh, Jordan, you came just at the right time. We're just waiting for you to get ready. And, <laughs> and let's do some jumping jacks, yeah? So, we've got this amazing fitness timer that will hopefully tell me. Okay, are you guys ready? So let's go. One, two, tap, 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 tap. Jordan, go. Why are you not moving? Okay. Oh, this is I love doing oh. this. All right, that was good. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Oh, business cards. Um, so have a seat. Have a seat. Lower your blood pressure. Uh, so it's good. Okay, so um, they call that interactive learning at the university. Um, part of it is that we want to get people a little bit more engaged in the content, and um, yeah, so this is kind of why we like to do a little bit of exercise. You know, now now you're actually able to um, take in some of the information that's coming. Okay, so who am I? Why am I talking about this stuff? Turn the microphone. Um, Huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm loud though. <laughs> okay, so um, um, my name is uh, Lena Ake. I uh, run a HCI games research group at the University of Waterloo, and I'm totally out of breath. Uh, <laughs> okay, it's good. Um, I came to this field by researching effective systems and emotions, and that's a microphone. I just want to make sure. Mic check one, two. Thank you. Okay. Um, so. Um, I research effective systems, um, emotional affordances, and in engaging interactive uh, systems or interactive technologies. And that's kind of how I came into the field of games research, where I was more interested in, okay, how can we apply some of this knowledge um, to the broader space of user experience, and how can you feed some of the user experience knowledge back into uh, games? And uh, so I started, I started out as a, as a quant guy. As some people would label that, and it's like, yeah, quantitative for everything. Like Jordan, eyes of fire. Um, but um, essentially, it turned out that qualitative is actually also super useful, and so I broadened my spectrum. I got really interested in the, uh, the breadth of user experience and the breadth of building all the, um, uh, the, the vastness of experience that we have out there. And so this is my group. Uh, these are the awesome folks that I have the pleasure of working with, and these are also the hopeful games user researchers of the future. Um, so the HCI Games Group is a this group that is doing um, all sorts of uh, user research with games. And we have a couple of postdocs, PhD students, uh, master students, and as you can see, we're a pretty playful bunch. Um, this is our annual summer photo, and somebody always brings a theme and says, yeah, okay, today we're gonna you know, go with foam swords and, uh, or rubber swords and like shooting things. And anyways, um, so uh, what I wanna talk to you today is about how do we train people, and I, I wanna do this a little bit interactive too, because I wanna see um, I want to get your thoughts. I want to um, get a little bit of your opinions. Um, this room for the day had a lot of round tables. Uh, there was a lot of audience interaction, so I'm going to try and integrate you with some questions here. Uh, but I also want to broadcast a little bit about the program so you get some information of um, what it actually is that we're doing when we're training games user researchers, right? And I want to start with this quote from Jesse, uh, Jesse Little. One, two, three. Jesse Chell, uh, who's a game designer. Um, wrote the art of game design, and uh, one of the chapters labeled "Without the experience, the game is worthless." I think that's actually true. Um, this is one of the things that came up if you have been to one of the other roundtables that we had today, um, where we <laughs> were kind of asking the meta question of uh, how do we define the success? How do we f define our value of, of, of games user researchers? And in my opinion, personally, I think it is games user researchers have value because the game wouldn't be a game without the right kind of user research. And unfortunately, Seth isn't here because we could have had an interesting discussion because he says lots of games out there have little to shit games user research done on them and they're successful, they're selling, 
um, and you're playing them. So that's sort of my mantra. My mantra is, yeah, maybe you're playing them, but that was a lucky accident. And it really, um, if you don't want to have lucky accidents, but something um, that, that works effectively, you have to have the right people trained to do that kind of stuff. Now, I want to start with a little anecdote. I'm German, as you might have picked up from the accent, um, but I'm Canadian, I guess, now, because I've immigrated. Um, but, oh, why is this moving so fast? Stop moving, come back. Um, so what we've got here is uh, a little anecdote about, oh, shoot, just, why, so, oh, somebody put an animation timer in there. It was possibly me. <laughs> Come back. Yeah, it's probably that's what it is. Like talking to Daniel yesterday. You don't like seriously. I was going to talk really fast. Is this what okay, you guys. <laughs> awesome. Um, you guys kind of remember the first slide. Let's go back to that one. It's gonna keep me on my toes here. Okay, cool. Press, press. Okay, <laughs> here we go. So I want to start with a little anecdote about this guy here, right? Like, and I'm just gonna go back to this guy here. <laughs> Um, just remember that face, right? Like little little piggy here with um, with the wool. Oh, come back, piggy. Um, it's gonna be. Um, let's let it go for now. Um, just remember that face. Uh, this is a, a German folklore tale about the egg-laying wool milk pig, and uh, this is a saying. The Eierlegende Wollmilchsau is what we call it, and this is <laughs> German, right? Like big long words. Um, but it's a saying about um, an animal that provides everything that you could ever want. Um, it provides wool, it provides eggs, it provides milk, it provides um, all these amazing things. Um, it provides a pig, um, all of these wonderful things that actually make up a delicious meal. And so uh, this is kind of the, the dream, I would say, that you have somebody that is exactly that, somebody that has uh, the, the capability you know, to be everything to everyone. However, Sometimes we don't have that kind of person, right? And actually, let me jump back to that slide again. Um, actually, what we often encounter is, as game studio researchers, we have to be highly interdisciplinary. And um, from all of the folks that I talk to in industry, this is actually working quite nicely in uh, medium-sized, small, and bigger companies without problems. However, in academia, mind you, this is very difficult. Academia has put boundaries in place for a reason, certain disciplines. Um, that are very proud to be independent disciplines. There's computer science, there's psychology, there's design and the arts, and you know, if you dare and try to train a student in all of these things at the same time, um, you get into a lot of trouble with your university and departments, because uh, it's kind of like every department wants to own a little bit of that student. Uh, you might not realize that when you go into grad school, but this is kind of how universities work. Universities actually want to get a share of you, and every department is fighting about that share of you. And so what we said, as a bunch of academics, we were like, this is stupid, because like, most of us have gone through a process, like I myself, I started in computer science, moved over to psychology, and now I'm sort of games HCI person. Um, so a lot of us have started in different disciplines, and we're actually proud that we have gathered that knowledge, but we often ha had to gather it by changing continents, changing um, programs, changing supervisors, doing a little bit here, a little bit there, uh, maybe not getting all of the work accredited, right? Like it is a journey that is actually quite complicated if you want to end up as somebody that has that highly interdisciplinary training that a lot of people value so much in a good games user researcher. So what we wanted to do with Swagger is we wanted to give um, that kind of training a platform. And so we wrote this grant saying, okay, you know what, dear government, uh, give us uh, maybe $2.5 million and uh, maybe we can make that work. Um, we can train a new generation of games user researchers um, in two institutions, University of Saskatchewan and University of Waterloo. And um, hopefully um, we'll build these people that are highly skilled, highly desirable for game companies to employ. Okay, so we said that, um, made a point of it, and submitted the grant, uh, was about two years ago. And so last year came through, government said, hey, yeah, we looked into this and turns out like user experience in games is kind of a hot topic right now and there's a lot of demand globally. You guys are right. Also, by the way, I should say thank you because um, we didn't do it alone. We actually had buy-in from all these wonderful companies. Um, if you work for one of these companies, um, I convinced one of you, <laughs> one of the people in the company to give me a signature at least that says, yeah, we support this. Um, this is just like, this is just saying, yeah, I support this. It's not actually a buy-in in terms of your company's donating any money or something. It's just like, 
a matter of, yes, we're behind this. Uh, and this is hard enough. Those of you working in the games industry, you know how hard it is to just go to your manager and saying, I need a signature <laughs> for something here. Uh, legal, legal has to look at it first. Okay, good. Um, so we managed to get all these people on, on board and say, yeah, we're interested, we're supporting this in uh, some um, way, shape, or form. And uh, now we're actually implementing it, and this is kind of awesome. So essentially what we're doing with this program, and I can just jump back to the slide. Um, essentially what we're doing with this program is this interdisciplinary training. So students can pick um, whatever they want to do their master's in. This is kind of the amendment we had to make to our university. So you still get a master's in psychology, in systems design engineering, in computer science, in whatever the discipline is that owns you. Your funding can come from this interdisciplinary unit. And that means you can do part of your courses at the University of Saskatchewan, part of your courses at the University of Waterloo, however you desire, feed those into your program and um, do an additional internship at the companies that are on that slide or at other games companies. Actually, we don't have any limits. So um, if there's any games companies here, I've already talked to a couple of them. Anyone interested in working with our students, we're more than happy to establish these connections. But these are the people that have said, yes, we totally take your students so far. Um, so I'm very happy that all of that is in place. But now the question is, how do you what, what kind of skills do you train these people in then? Like, okay, you want to you wanna build good user researchers. What do they need to know? And I want to start with like a little word, and this is a wonderful animated graphic from Interaction Design. Um, a little word about user experience, because a lot of people say, huh, yeah, user researchers, what is that, what is that encompass? And um, if you go outside of games, if you go to the space of HCI and uh, bigger conferences like Kai, and if you look at companies like Google or Facebook, you see that there is a lot of confusion sometimes about UI designer, UX designer, um, HCI person, interaction designer. Um, so where, where do we draw the boundaries of what these people do? Well, they're kind of all in the same space, but I really like this description which says, well, user experience really encapsulates a lot of uh, the, the things from that field. It looks at the look, which is usually the UI designers a little bit more concerned with that look. It looks at the feel. This is where we have a lot of people with psychology backgrounds that are caring about the user. What, what do the users feel when they interact with that environment? And of course, usability, like the hands down, hands to your pants, um, totally strict testing that a lot of us do, like very, really structured saying, okay, this is what makes good playability. This is what makes good usability. This is how you test it. There are methods out there that we can use. Let's use those methods. So obviously the idea is um, to train students that have all of these opportunity, uh, all of these um, properties. So, and uh, this is kind of where the, the question comes to the audience, if anyone wants to chime in, if anyone sort of has the background to kind of you know, want to comment on that. But this is kind of what we saw in there. So our ideal students have that background. They come from theory de design. So that's what we mean, like, if you are a user researcher, we also would like you, and this is, of course, our ideal, we're building a games user researcher scenario, we like you to understand some of the theory and design. And this is not just psychological theories, it's also design theories, it's design thinking, it is uh, understanding things like fun, flow, engagement, challenge, difficulty, choice, decision making. All of these things that are important for game design are also important to understand as a games user researcher. So we want all of that theoretical background in there. We want methods, uh, such as user testing methods, deciding when you want to test, why you want to test, how you want to test. Um, we want to look at being really good at different kind of methods. So um, the standard method that we always start with is observation. And th there might be disagreements uh, in the audience uh, whether or not you know, that's the way to go. But for me personally, that's the way I would start any user test. A uh, client has a problem. OK, so we identify the problem. We ado adopt the design mindset. And to get a better idea of the problem, we observe what the user is doing. That way, we get a very, very clear idea of how we can tackle that problem. So we go into contextual inquiry. We look at, OK, what's the user doing in that environment? Um, how are they facing the problem? How can we find a strategy for a solution? This is how we always start. Um, then we would uh, teach other methods, such as surveys, expert interviews, and so forth, that help us dig deeper and get a better qualitative understanding of what's wrong with that problem. How can we tackle it? And then we would go into more uh, advanced measures that are also really good in conjunction, I say in conjunction, with observation and qualitative inquiry, such as uh, training students in um, analyzing metrics. This is any kind of telemetry that's coming from a game. We have a very strong background ourselves in metrics. Uh, a lot of researchers in that field um, work with us in uh, game analytics. Um, and myself, my specialty is physiological measures, uh, so there's a lot of a training in that space that we can provide to these students. And um, again, the emphasis is on expanding your horizon and 
providing that breadth of meth methods. But then also, so not just theory and design methods, but also communication, the students need to be able to communicate well how the, how the findings work for, um, for other folks. Uh, so what kind of knowledge have you gathered? How can you transfer that kind of knowledge that you have? Um, so my quick question uh, before I move on is, does anyone have any strong feelings about this holy trinity of the ideal games user researcher that we've cooked up in our academic labs, as in somebody that understands theory and design methods and communication? Yeah, it's actually uh, it's good that you say that because I'm actually going to talk about, a little bit about platforms and new platforms that we might have not even envisioned yet in a, in a sec. Uh, but yeah, absolutely, the idea is that we want to train students in a variety of different platforms, but also get them into a mindset of, so what might the next platform be and how would you test for that? Uh, because we obvi obviously want future-facing students that can tackle the challenges of the next 10, 20 years to come. Uh, this is always kind of weird. As a researcher, you're always thinking like of like 10, 20, 30 years in the future, whereas in industry, it's like, okay, so deadline is next week. <laughs> and this is partially because the universities are super slow, but it's also partially because you want to train people for that future. Okay, so how does our um, ideal student look like? What's your name? Jane Gerbinder. Yeah, five minutes. Holy shit. Okay, and now I'll be able to do it. Um, so the idea is that there's going to be a theory back background, as I said, methods, communication, but also practice, right? Uh, so they understand the theories that drive the design and development. They're skilled in the selection and deployment of user research methods, so they need to have all that background knowledge. They need to understand and communicate the value of games user research to their clients. That's the communication aspect. And then the last part, and this is where the industry internships comes in, come, come in, is they also need to be able to apply what they've learned because we can only teach so much in academia, and we actually know of our limitations. Yeah, we were not gonna pretend that um, we can bake the perfect. Know that need your help. The student needs to actually have been exposed to industry to um, be a perfectly employable person. Okay. <clears throat> so to, yeah, to outline some of the components here, is essentially, um, if you go to our website, swagger.ca, uh, you will find all of these components explained. But essentially, we want to have a foundation of knowledge that the student has. We want to um, make sure that there's good collaboration with industry that the students have a portfolio that is interesting, that they can communicate effectively, and this is at the Gur Summit. So my hope is that in the next two to three years, the guys that are sitting here right now that are students, you're gonna be our students, <laughs> hopefully, most of you. Um, so hopefully, we'll see a lot of these students sitting in here hungry, maybe even communicating some of their initial results at the Gur Summit, actually presenting what is going on there. And then entrepreneurship, a lot of our students have a strong tie, especially in Waterloo. There's a huge startup um, uh, flair environment um, that allows people to build their own little startups and, of course, people that have training in tools that are relevant. So question is, what can these graduates do for you? I'm just going to look at the clock here. Um, so the idea is they have rich background knowledge. I already said that. Um, so it's based on the current literature. They're adept at the user research methods. So you do not need to train them in statistics or any interview techniques. They come pre-trained. They will understand the developer perspective because they've been exposed to game development. And they're interdisciplinary facilitators. And this is actually the important part because oftentimes that lacks. You, you hire a graduate from psychology. You hire a graduate from computer science. It is not a given that they know how to communicate interdisciplinarily. And we'll make sure that that is there, that understanding that you have to go beyond your own discipline. <clears throat> So the question really is then, what are the most important GER theories, or well, this is going fast, um, <laughs> or what theories would we teach? And here's just like giving you an example of some of those. Um, I think one of the interesting theories about understanding how play works is the player journey. This is coming from Amy Jo Kim, and it's kind of just uh, going through. Okay, you have to train people about how to understand the world. You have to scaffold. You have to build a habit, and then. In the end game, you have to really look at mastering the game and uh, really looking at the social aspect of the game to keep people engaged over a long period of time. So that's going to be a, a part of what we're going to be teaching. I'm just going to give you a taster here. Also, how much traditional UX is allowed, right? Like tra traditional UX has a space in games, and it is important that we look back to traditional UX. Uh, it's going so fast. So okay, so traditional UX is important, but when I say traditional UX, I mean 
something like that. So basically, we adopt the model, the, the, the process flow that we know from traditional UX, and we apply it obviously in games. And as you know, in conducting any kind of user research, but also games user research, you basically have that uh, two-folded um, process, where first you form questions, then you gather knowledge. So you set objectives, you form hypotheses, then you select the right method, you conduct your test, and then you synthesize the knowledge and broadcast the knowledge to the team. This is the process model that we'll be following that all of our students will be adept in. And this kind of gives you an idea of all of the GUR methods that we're currently um, interested in. But in the sake of time, maybe we're not going to go over those. Um, let's look at some of the challenges in the last minute. Um, so upcoming challenges are, of course, we have to look at location-based games. We have to look at virtual reality. We have to look at new interaction technologies and knowledge transfer. So one of the things is location-based games, right? Uh, with location-based games, um, we're really struggling with the, um, the new technologies, like how do we evaluate those virtual reality games, game sound, um, all of these aspects are really, really important um, when we're building games. But we also have to ask ourselves, what about if we all of a sudden have to evaluate smell? Or what if we have to evaluate taste? Like all of these aspects will become important as we're building these games user researchers because they have to think about uh, these next input modal modalities and in the sake of time I'm not going to talk about all of them. Oh my god. Um, so where would this degree take you? Ideally at academia is one of the options but user research and UX design is very common not just in the games industry. You could end up at a larger company. You could really drive innovation and hopefully help change the understanding of user research in general but specifically user research in games. That was the fastest presentation today. Thank you for your attention. Please contact me.